How did a rainy Sinclair end up in Jamestown, New York? I don't know, <laughs> but I did. You on a team with a guy named Galarraga? Yes, I was, roommates. Tell me about Andres Galarraga at a, that early time period. I got a, I got a good story for, uh, Pat will probably remember this story. Uh, for Andres Galarraga, we were, we were struggling and playing uh, not too well at the time, and uh, Pat Doherty had one of his uh, little in-room, locker room meetings, you know, and uh, I know this stuff isn't supposed to get out, Pat, but, you know, we, you know, we got to tell these stories once in a while to, to bring back the memories. But anyways, Andres Galarraga spoke very little English then, but he did understand, you know, basic English and, uh, and, and knew how to talk basic English and because we were roommates and we lived together there, a bunch of us in a house and everything, so I know he understood a lot more than he let on. And anyways, Pat was going around the locker room, going up and down everybody's backside, down the other. And he, come, he came to Galarraga and he started on Galarraga and Galarraga kind of looked at him and said, no comprende, which means I don't understand, you know? And just by the look that Galarraga gave him, we know that Galarraga understood everything that he was saying. And Pat Doherty starts screaming at the top of his lungs, well, you understand this in much nicer words than I'm using right now, but you understand this, don't you? Tomorrow, manana, you jet plane home to Venezuela. And those are kind words that I just used right there. But Big Cat got the idea and everything, and, and it continued on. But uh, yeah, Andres, what a great guy he is. Just a, a gentleman, a, a hard worker, and he's always had that uh, knack for fielding. And that's where his, uh, I guess his nickname, that's where we started calling him the Big Cat and everything. And that was in, uh, in low rookie ball. Pat Doherty, you close your eyes and you think of Pat Doherty. I don't need to close my eyes. <laughs> I can think of Pat. What a great guy. A intense human being. Um, what a fire, you know, just a, a fireball of intensity. And a, a great guy, a great teacher, and um, really a, a first class guy on the baseball field, no doubt. 1981, you end up coming up to Jamestown, New York, and it looks like you probably came by, came in during, I don't want to say the mid-season, but after the season had started. Had a great year. You had a 1.90 ERA, uh, and your team actually got into the playoffs, and you were part of pitching against Oneonta that year. Do you remember much about that year? Do you remember much about the <laughs> Not a whole lot. Kind of vaguely remember the the town and where we lived in a, in a college. We lived in a college house, a bunch of us and everything. Um, it, you know, it's getting further and further back and the memories are fading and fading and fading, but uh, uh, I understand that they did some different things with the ballpark and everything and stuff, but I mean, good memories of, of the guys and, and uh, the team that we had there and, uh, and actually the, the few of us that went on to, to play in the big leagues off that team and everything. So uh, it, was a, it was a fun time and uh, I'll always hold those memories very dear. Pat Morrell, who was the general manager then, does, does, does that have any recollection of Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, so he does. Uh, I didn't know Pat all that well, but uh, he was a, a very nice guy and everything. And, uh, uh, you know, as a, as a player, you really don't get to that front office staff much, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, you try to stay out of those plays, especially when I was coming up through. You know, you stayed away from that, those front office people and everything, you know, you never wanted to go in there. There was about one time that you'd get called in and that was when you were in trouble or getting sent down or released or something like that. So it was kind of like, I want to stay away from there, you know. What's Frank Wren mean to you? Frank Wren, uh, he was a teammate, uh, uh, a game around the field, hard nose, ran, played hard, ran hard, every ball, you know. Uh, uh, a good baseball player and uh, unfortunately had some things happen to him that I think cut his career a little bit short with the uh, problems he had, you know, and everything. But uh, still a very good, knowledgeable baseball person and uh, still in the game today. What's your career like? I mean, you, you ended up going from Jamestown, you went to the big major league, pitched in a World Series at Atlanta Braves. Uh, what's your goal? Uh, my goal is, of course, to get back. The big leagues is the only place to be in this game, you know. I mean, that's where you have the most fun. That's the... Uh, that's the, the you know the top of the the top of the ladder. I'd like to be be a pitching coach and uh, be in the big leagues, uh, you know. And, and, and if I don't, it, it's not the ultimate uh, 
I, I really enjoy working a lot with these players, these young kids and the, and the players. At, at, this, at this level, they're not so young. But I enjoy working with a guy and seeing him make adjustments to maybe get him past that, that hump that's just giving him that, that instability where he can't make it to that next level. And when you do that with a guy and you help a guy out like that and he moves on and goes up to the big leagues, it's just like you feel so good for him, you know, knowing that he did it, he, you know. And, you know, although, you know, it's not you that's doing it, it, it kind of, it's a, it's a satisfaction that you get from helping somebody, you know, and ultimately it's his, it's his, you know, deal. He's got to do it, you know, but when you, when you help him make that extra step and get there, it's really uh, very gratifying. Randy St. Clair's highlight. That's my highlight. Uh, my highlight would be uh, pitching in the, in the 91 World Series. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I enjoyed that a lot. That whole, that whole year was kind of a really uh, miraculous, funny year for me. I went from uh, the year before I, I started in Tucson and they called me up but didn't call me up. And two weeks later I got released and I went to Okie City, pitched very, really well in Okie City and then I couldn't find a job in the start of 91 year. I mean, it was two weeks before spring training, I still had no job. Uh, and I was wondering what's going on, you know, I'm 30 and I can't find a job. I just, you know, finished off having a great year and everything and uh, couldn't find a job. So I got a minor league invite that year, 91 with the Braves, went on to pitch in Richmond, uh, started the year really, really good. And then I got called up to the major leagues and uh, what, a, what a pennant drive that was with the Pirates and the Dodgers and Cincinnati going in there. and. I mean, it was just so much fun, and then being able to pitch that fifth game of the World Series at home when we won, to take the lead three to two in games before we went back to Minnesota and eventually lost it in seven. But what a what a series, what a National League Championship series that was, and everything. So it was a lot of fun. Expos are at risk, certainly at this point. What's the mood on the team like? Uh, d right now, I don't even see anybody. You know, it's, yeah. you know, it's. When you hit that baseball field, you know, it's, that's what you're there for, you know? That other stuff, you know, you talk about it outside, but once you take the field, it's like, there's nothing, everything's all right in the world, you know? It's just like, that's what you're there for. That's your love and your passion and everything. So for me, it, you know, it, it really, I'll be in this game someplace or another, so, you know, and I'm really not worried about, I've, I've been fired too many times, released too many times, and it, it just doesn't seem to bother me anymore, you know. I'll, I'll fall where the chips fall and I'll, and I'll come back up rising, you know, so it's, I'm not really worried about it. And I don't see too many of the guys really, I, I think they know that no matter what happens, they're still going to have jobs in this game and everything, and, and uh, they're going to be able to play. So, you know, it's just, it's just a little bit of uncertainty of where you're going to be is all. This has been terrific. I'm sorry. I'm glad to have taken some of your time. Sure. Can I have to take a picture of you here, Randy? Sure. And we'll send this off to Pat. Greg Johnson. Hoss. I was just telling some Hoss stories the other day. Tell us one. <laughs> this is great. Not on, not on camera. I can't tell Hoss Johnson stories on camera. <laughs> that alone is worth going. Yeah.